Welcome in to the new members and to the old members that have found their way back to the community. I need you just as much as you need me. In this morning's update, we've got a lot to talk about. One, we've had a bit of a bounce back on XRP. As we know, we went down to 41 cents on Friday into Saturday. We are down in those areas. Now we've pushed up to 51.1 cents. Now we do have a major catalyst in development here of a possible big price swing coming, and it may not be in the positive sense. So a whale transfers 300 million, 390 million XRP to bit thump or buy thump. Is Ripple going to dump? That is a huge, huge amount sent. And since it was sent from an unknown wallet or from a wallet to an exchange, this is... This is the precursor to typical dumps. Now, to be more bullish when you have a move like that by a whale, you would want it to say from exchange to unknown wallet. This is from a wallet to an exchange. So this would suggest they're going to dump that on the market. And that is a massive amount of XRP. So we'll get into that. So 390 million XRP was transferred by a whale. From a wallet to the exchange, buy thump, bit thump. So that suggests that that's going to be a sale. So we need to pay very close attention here today. If that, in fact, does get put into the market, on top of the $100 million that Ripple uh, sent from an unknown wallet yesterday, so that you know that's almost a half a billion XRP. So we need to see what the implications of that is going forward. It's a little dicey here today. We're coming back up to major resistance areas. And now we're going to try to, uh, it would be an attempt to try to continue to push forward. The uh, problem is, is we don't really have a lot of volume here. And now let's move this over because even if it breaks down here, it's the same exact target. Um, but this is starting to go more like in a rising sense. It's like, do, 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 do. I mean, eventually this is going to do this. If it continues to do this, I'm just, I'm being real. If that continues to move up like that, this is a disaster, a recipe for disaster. You're not getting any real straight move here. You're just getting a little bit of consolidatory push-ups. But we haven't had any real spike here. None. So if this continues in this sense, this is bearish. We don't want to continue this weird upward consolidation like this up and this is like a rising channel in the making. These are bearish reversals at the top, especially if they don't break bullish. So what you would expect is it to come all the way back down to where it started. I mean, to me, it's still uncomfortable that we never created a double bottom like this. Like, I would love to see the double bottom down here. It's just we never created it. Now it's like the excavator going up. I need to see some volume. Otherwise, I feel like this is just about to implode. I really do. I really do. Like I said yesterday and the day before, if we come down to a double bottom retest or worse... Oh my God, I've got a lot of money on the sidelines now. It's all set up from great trades. It's all set up there for XRP to make this next pull because I'm not one to reestablish a bag on the first dip down. I like to, uh, I already have my XRP. The point is, is I'm going to add to the bag. I needed to come down for that double tap. Otherwise, I can have a quick recovery here and I'm good. But if it comes down here and does the traditional move, and it's starting to trend in that direction here. I don't know if it's going to fall through, but I'm telling you, this is set up more like a rising channel here on the retest. These are not very bullish when it does this because you come down and instead of having the V-shape recovery, you kind of just limp up. And then eventually you run out of the steam and then you just come back down to the technical move. That's if it breaks down. If we can get some volume in and start catapulting back up, you would start to push back towards that 59, 60 cent area and I think it's pretty defined how it gets there because you're on the handle support right now. And then if you were to hold this, even though we are very slowly skipping our way across and if we're not careful, we could put in a reversal candle here in the higher time frames, the three and four hourly. If we're not careful here, starting to trend in that direction because we just can't find any volume. Just because it's broke back into these areas and there's a lot, a long way until overbought. Right now is a dangerous area because we need volume to continue this continuation. Otherwise, without a lack of volume, that 505 could fall very quickly. Um, but if we do push up, we're looking at that 608 mark. That's over the top. That's not the first target, but that is the first one over the top if we were to make it. 
Right now we're trying to hold a very critical level here at 505. Well, 503 on the way back down. Because we like to show and then on the way up, 505 to stay over. So bottom line is if you find yourself under 50.3 cents, it could fall pretty bearish pretty quickly. Now, if we do get on top of this and this turns out to be more than just a rising channel, well, now we could have a little bit of momentum if we can find some volume and then you'd break up into these areas. You got that mid-tier handle resistance that we could push back up to. We know we're still very much in a cup and handle formation. So it's not the end of the world yet. Even if it breaks down, it's not the end of the world. But I want everybody to see the optics out in front of us right now. If this ends up being a rejection here, it can turn out to be pretty ugly. So what you're looking for, if you want continuation this morning, we want to hold that 50.3 cent level. If we hold 50.3 cents, we can retest these upper areas, even if bearish. If we lose that, it would almost, it would almost unifiably be telling us that we need to retest those lower levels. Whether that means we come back down and hit again this uptrending support from this all-time formation from when we hit all-time highs in 2018 in January, took 27 months to come down to a new support floor at just over 10 cents in 2020 in March. And now that uptrend's held intact the entire time. The fact we came all the way down here would suggest if we don't continue up, that we would have to retest here. But now we do have the chance to come up to 58.4 cents. That's the uh, expandable zone that we broke down of. I call it the extension zone or the expansion zone. That could be a retest area if we continue to move more unifiably. Just I don't really like the way it's pushing up, or, uh, pushing up. It almost suggests that we need to come back down to double bottom. But we won't know that unless we lose this area. But I'm definitely looking at that perspective that the technical target is down there at 397. So we'll see if this continues to move up in a rising formation, like a rising channel, and then it pours out, or if we can get some parabolic volume. We need some volume here this morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching this morning, we need some volume. If you think XRP, I would love to hear in the comments, but if you are watching right now, if you appreciate XRP, if you just wanna see more people see the truth about the formation of XRP, please hit that like button so YouTube will recommend this update. It helps out more than most even understand by you hitting that like button. It not only shows you my content, but allows new and older viewers when they're looking through their YouTube feed and scrolling through, they'll find my content and then they'll have a way to find the, the show. Without seeing it advertised, no one will ever even really know who I am. So please make sure that that like button, YouTube will recommend this. We become a part of the algorithm, which means that I pop up in your feed. So you can find your way here for the first time or find your way back home. Make sure you look in the video description below and or pinned comments. There's BitUnix. Get on board with that when there's high times of volatility, low spot and level trading fees in the USA. You don't need a VPN to trade XRP. So get it right. Don't pay the extraordinary fees of Uphold and many other exchanges. Don't go on exchanges that aren't available in high times of volatility. Once again, BitUnix proved its worth on Friday during that massive drop. It never went down. So pay attention to that. You don't even need a KYC if you're uh, depositing and withdrawing from another exchange. So just consider that. It's my new go-to exchange. Easy as that. Um, and then if you want to show me personal support, consider one time per month, either joining Tom's army and getting the emoji badge of me being abducted by aliens in month one, or consider sending one YouTube super chat per month. It really does help. So with that being said, let me get into the intro and then we'll continue this analysis. And as you know, if you stay until the end, We'll finish this with the whale transfers 390 million XRP to bit thump or buy thump. Is Ripple going to dump? That's a massive transfer, leaving a wallet and going back onto an exchange. So the optics say we're about to dump. The technical analysis suggests if this continues any longer in this rising formation, this rising channel setup, this is going to dump back down to the bottom. So there are hints here that if we lose that 503 level 50.3 cents that this could get ugly but we haven't lost that area yet so we'll see how this hinders but it does look like we're going to trend possibly back in that direction here on this monday morning and we know in the eastern standard time zone that oftentimes when we have rallies first thing in the morning they'll cut our throats a little bit let the weak hands you know flail and then uh do what we got to do as i said on friday 
B2 Gold, I was out at three bucks because I could see retracement coming. It's down 3.63% today. Newman, I was out at 39.70. We're just looking at the retracement now. And AG First Majestic, I was out at $7.83. There's a reason why I sold out on Friday, not because I want to permanently sell, but because I seen a rotation coming real quick. And these are consolidatory pulls. This is not a bad thing. It's just, if you understand the analysis, you understand we had to have a little bit of a pull down. First chance to buy back would be at the 20 day in the 30 minute time frame. But if you're looking at it realistically, we have a golden cross here. We have a bullish cross here in the daily. Four hourly, we come back down to retest the golden cross. I'm expecting it to come back down to about $2.55. That's where I'll start looking to buy back. I'll keep everybody updated on this. I just had a bad feeling on Friday when we had that parabolic spike. It should have kept going. Instead, it looked like we had some exhaustion candles. So good or bad, I don't mind even if it's at $3 to rebuy back and if it goes back over the top. But I really firmly believe 255 is probably coming here. But we don't have time for precious metals. I just wanted to show the initial push down. Even though gold was up a couple bucks, it felt like we were topping a little bit and we had to come down for correction. So I personally know where I would be looking for. If that 2313 breaks, I firmly believe we're coming down to that 200 in the four hourly, and we should get a $2,220 gold if this reverses down here. I just, I feel like the US dollar is going parabolic, and it was just weird on Friday that gold and silver was going with it. It just didn't feel right. So right now we have a technical move, technically up to $110 or 110 spot, one, two, four for the US dollar, but that is infringent, or that is, um, it's basically prefaced on the fact that we can get over this 107 spot 30. 106 spot 23 is the first target. Once you get over the top of that and hold the um, confirmation at 107.30, then you have a technical move of 110. I just feel like that could be detrimental a little bit here, short term for precious metals. But look at this. There's already an opportunity this morning. I just can only go by my own technicals because that's where I feel comfortable. Um, and I was up several thousand dollars, almost three grand on that trade. So... You know, it's, it was a nice, it was or actually about 2300 because it was about 7000 in up to nine, so 2200 in profit. So now I'm looking for that next poll. So good morning, 9.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Monday, April 15th, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. As I started here, I don't feel comfortable with XRP right now with the price. Had a tremendous drop, had a nice recovery of about 27%, but the recovery is filled in this rising channel. Most times, and you guys can target this however you want, you can call this pattern whatever you desire, but this looks like it's starting in a rising formation, and what my analysis is going to say is if we break this, we're going to be looking at about a 21% drop here down to the technical retest. And I would feel a lot better if it does that because that would be a double bottom. I understand with the wick off, some people are calling the double bottom already an untrue because if you're doing the wick off and you're saying it's complete, you have to have that volatile retest. These little, there's nothing here. There's no double bottom. So my speculation to everybody over the weekend was, yeah, be happy while this rallies. But if this can't hold this 50.3 cents here back down, it's telling us we have to come back down. This rising channel will give way. Anything short of having a massive spike of volume, you're more than likely looking at a drop over a rise here. So me, to start the week, I'm looking more bearish than bullish. I understand the Hong Kong exchange, yada, yada, yada. But just remember what happened in the States initially. When we had the ETF put online, everything dumped initially, like hardcore. And then all of a sudden, a month or two later, it just started going crazy. So are we going to have a similar event here? Everybody's talking about the Hong Kong exchange, but with the drop like it had, now we need to really see if it's just going to fall apart. XRP has not fallen apart yet, folks. There could still be the push up to 60 cents. But if you were part of the live yesterday, we talked about if we can't hold this 50.3 to the support and we have to break 50.5 over the top and hold, which we are right now, but we've come down some, as we know, we we're closer to 52 cents. Even when I started this update, we we're up near 51.4. So it is starting to recede the opposite way here. But that doesn't mean it's over, folks. Let's look at Bitcoin. Ooh. I mean, 
That's an interesting formation. The bottom line here is Bitcoin has to hold this area now. We need to hold 60. There's 66,600, which is a very important level if you want to hold. That's a pivot point, so I'm just going to put that back there. If it breaks down, your first Brie test down is around 50, uh, 64K. But this gets dicey. If Bitcoin breaks this, and this was just a mid-tier level, that's why we have it there. But that was more like we had this uptrend. Here, let me put this back. I might have pulled it just a little bit because I was trying to get it back to 66, but let's just put it how it shows us. That's the uptrend. If it loses that, it was just this extension zone. Then you got 63,600 approximately. If you lose that and get rejected, the technical target's 49,500. I very much can see Bitcoin coming there. I can very much see it come there, especially if we don't get any parabolic push here this morning or this the, today. If we don't go bullish today, I very much can see a big retrade. I still don't know if that was the biggest drop here. I still feel like that that could have been a trap to come back up here, catch everybody else, and then it could still come down. That's why I'm showing you these urgent alerts here with what could happen if we break these targets. But I've also showed you the bullet scenario. But right now, it's tugging at my heart with the way it's coming up to just be cautiously optimistic here. And let's get out of this little rising channel setup before we get overly bullish here because right now it's suggesting a bearish reversal here. So let's just be very cautious. And before I leave... I want to read that article, but first let's take a look at XRP Healthcare as it's up another 9.89%. We're back up over 7 cents. We have a technical target of 9.3 cents after the consolidation if it plays out true, but there is no guarantee it's going to with the with the very real volatility this morning in crypto and over the weekend. But right now we're looking pretty good at just the volumes dying down. The volumes dying down a little bit, so we have to be cautious of that. And then we are attempting to break out of a longer term if you set this up like this instead of two short-term patterns. You technically at 6.8 is where you want to break over to start pushing that next tier. So just pay attention to that. We'll watch more about XRP Healthcare later, but I really want to read what's going on here. We'll talk to my XRP Healthcare more about in the live. But we've got to be very, very vigilant this morning. There's a lot of things going on across not just the regular markets, but precious metals. There's a lot of things going on when it comes to the DXY. So look at opportunity here because there is opportunity. We should get opportunity even more going forward. But now it's going to be the patience game to see exactly how the market is ready to push next. So with the threat of war with Iran and Israel, it's obviously taken effect. And with the fear trade going back into the dollar, that does hinder some of our other trades. Precious metals can get a quick kick in the nuts, which is what's happening this morning. Nothing major yet. But we can expect, if this doesn't break in a positive direction here, which it looks like we're starting to give it back now. Gold was up like 30 bucks. Silver is getting up near 4%. So now it's starting to give it back a little bit. So I'm watching the markets universally and cautious optimism. But I have a lot of money to be put in on any extraordinary push. If we get any more volatility to the downside, I'm well positioned from good trading to be able to capitalize in an even bigger way. So let's finish with this. Whale transfers 390 million XRP to bit thump or buy thump. Is Ripple going to dump? So XRP dropped 31% and recovered 22% to 51% or 51 cents. Large whale deposits may indicate upcoming selling pressure. XRP's resistance challenges hint at potential further declines. The Ripple token XRP price experienced a notable decline over the weekend. From April 12th, when it was worth around 60 cents, it dropped more than 30% to a low of 42 cents on April 13th. Since then, it has recovered, reaching a high of 51 cents on April 14th. However, the market crash might have spooked some XRP whales, making them deposit a substantial sum on the Korean exchange bit dump. These deposits usually indicate upcoming selling pressure, so will XRP make another sharp downturn? According to Whale Alert, a significant transaction involving 390.87 million XRP tokens occurred today. April 15th, these tokens valued at approximately 201.1 million were transferred to BitDump, the second largest exchange in South Korea. So here's the Whale Alert, 390,869,591 XRP were 201,100,740 USD dollars transferred from unknown wallet to buy thump or bit thump 
Further analysis reveals the center's address associated with BitDump and was activated more than four years ago. After the transaction, the sender's wallet retained a minimal balance of 19.99 XRP. Meanwhile, the recipient's wallet now holds a total of 553.17 million XRP. This transfer has led to XRP becoming one of the top three most traded tokens on BitDump. It now accounts for 7.44% of the exchange's total trading volume of 941 million. Only Bitcoin and Tether have higher trading volumes at Bit, on BitDump than XRP. XRP's last significant uptrend began on February 6th, starting from a base of 50 cents and climbing to its descending resistance to approach $1 by mid-July 2023, suggesting the start of a potential bull market. The price movement followed a five-wave impulse pattern make, peaking at 75 cents on March 11th before declining to 618 Fibonacci retracement level. This level often indicates a reversal in corrective phases, hinting that this drop may be a component of a larger bullish adjustment. However, this is no longer valid. Yesterday's drop brought the price to its highly significant ascending support and nearly broke it to the downside. The price proved it can't successfully embark on an uptrend because it was under 75 cents for more than 150 days. It is attempting to regain some of its value and enter the symmetrical triangle again. However, as it approaches its apex, a breakout to the downside looks more likely. If this does occur, XRP could face more downside with its first target being 40 cents and its second 32 cents. Please pay attention very closely because this was on the money. Make sure you hit that like button so YouTube recommends this update before you leave. And if you made it until the end, hashtag be better, do better in the comments as I want to know who made it till the end. Be very cautiously optimistic today as we could be in the precipice of a 20% drop here as XRP continues this dangerous trend in this little rising channel since recovery and this 390 million XRP by a whale transferred from a wallet to the exchange bit dump is very, very cause for concern. Be blessed. Don't forget to give thanks to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. And don't let emotions dictate your reality. News and charts alike will help you create an educated and informed response to what comes next. Have a blessed morning and afternoon, everybody. I will see you later on today.